Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. In a world where shadows dance on the edges of our consciousness, there lies a topic that often elicits discomfort and unease, a subject that forces us to confront the darker aspects of human nature. Today, we embark on a journey to explore unimaginable cruelty and depravity. Depravity, a word that echoes through the annals of time, transcending cultures and generations. It's a complex and often unsettling concept, encompassing a range of morally corrupt behaviours that challenge our understanding of humanity. I'm Disturbed Reality, and today we delve into the depths of depravity as we explore and discuss five of the worst gore videos online. Please do not search for the videos in question. You have been warned. But nevertheless, let's get into it. Number 1. Two Guys One Chainsaw Quite possibly, this is the most famous cartel execution video ever recorded, and it's certainly the first to ever go viral. The video was released in 2011, and it truly shocked the internet upon its upload. The video perfectly encapsulated the new era of the drug trade, an era of paramilitarization and extreme hyperviolence. The victims in the video were believed to be members of the Sinaloa cartel, and I happen to believe that they may have been executed by members of the Beltran Leyva cartel, who at the time were at war with Cartel de Sinaloa. The Beltran Leyva faction was originally part of the Sinaloa cartel, but broke away after the arrest of Alfredo Beltran Leyva, one of the leaders of the BLO. Alfredo's remaining brothers, especially Arturo Beltran Leyva, suspected El Chapo of being behind the capture of their brother, and soon went to war with their old employers. The war would last a number of years, and was especially brutal, though in the end, Cartel de Sinaloa came out on top. The victims in the video are related, Felix Gámez García being the nephew of his fellow captive, Barnabas Gámez Castro. Felix Gámez García had a history of working in the drug trade, and had previous drug charges in the USA before being deported back to Mexico, and it's said he got his uncle involved in the cartel. The video is a longer one, at nearly 6 minutes in length, with the first 3 minutes or so being the interrogation. As you play the video, you see both men sitting against an old dirt wall, both shirtless, with their hands tied behind their backs. They answer the questions posed to them by Sicarios dressed in military uniforms, and they talk, but deep inside, they must have known that no matter what they said, they would not make it out of this alive. You can hear it in their voices, worn, beaten, tired, and left without hope. The men admit to working for Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. They describe their duties as halcons, lookouts, or at one time, riding in the convoys when they were asked to do so. The uncle, Barnabas, has a message for those who might decide to enter the drug trade, and he delivers it with a shaky voice. Think next time you decide to give the finger. Think about it very carefully, because it's not easy being here, and you never return back. With these people, you don't play around. The people of El Chapo are not how they say they are. In my original video covering the case, I think I stated that these executions were carried out by the Sinaloa cartel, as according to my research at the time, the men had apparently stolen from their employers, but I don't think that's the case any longer. After uploading that video, many people got in touch and suggested that the killers belonged to the Beltran Labour organisation, which makes sense as the statement from Barnabas is somewhat damning towards El Chapo, which wouldn't make sense if it was an internal execution within the Sinaloa cartel as initially claimed. I do now believe that the Sicarios were more than likely members of BLO. Regardless, after Barnabas reads out his final words, the brutality then ensues. The uncle and nephew sit next to each other as they await their fate. It's worth noting, Barnabas the uncle has a constant look of dread, fear, and apprehension etched upon his face. 
His voice in the interrogation was stuttery and breaking. However, the nephew Felix is totally resigned to his fate. His facial expressions neutral, not changing, presenting a stoic appearance. At around three minutes into the video, it jump cuts to a new scene. The camera is slightly further away from the victims, and you see a Sicario, kind of half in shot, half out of shot. He is facing away from the two men, and it is obvious he is carrying something. You then hear the sound of a chainsaw starting up. The Sicario turns around and faces Barnabas, and you see the chainsaw in shot. He revs it as he approaches Barnabas, and he slowly draws the blade closer to his neck, before eventually, the rotating blade chews through Barnabas' throat. Blood instantly flows down his chest, and sprays onto his nephew sitting next to him. Barnabas grimaces as the blade hits his throat, but the Sicario pulls back for a few seconds as his victim bleeds profusely. He revs up the chainsaw once more and cuts deeper into the victim's neck. Once again, the Sicario pulls the blade back, and this time, Barnabas keels over to his right, so that his head is now laying on his nephew's shoulder as he continues to bleed. Felix is now covered in the blood of his uncle. The Sicario revs up the saw for a third time, and as Barnabas rests his head on his nephew's shoulder, the Sicario then slices once again, decapitating the victim. In doing so, the tip of the chainsaw actually cut into Felix's arm, though Felix doesn't react in the slightest. After his uncle has had his head severed, Felix takes a brief look down at his decapitated uncle, and then looks back up. Once again, his expression doesn't change. The man with the chainsaw then backs away and turns it off, and another Sicario then enters the scene. He is wearing jeans and a black top and a black ski mask. He's carrying a hunting knife, which he takes to Felix's throat and immediately starts cutting. For the first time, Felix's expression changes, and he grimaces as the Sicario cuts him. Felix is made to suffer more than his uncle, and his death is much slower. After slicing the front of Felix's neck, the Sicario then cuts around the sides, severing the carotid artery. Felix can be heard wheezing and struggling for breath incredibly loud. The cut in his throat makes a high-pitched noise, while the blood filling in his throat and lungs gurgle. The beheading of Felix takes over two minutes, and he was alive throughout most of it. After he is beheaded, the Sicario attempts to place the severed head on Felix's corpse. It stays in place for a couple of seconds, before rolling off and hitting the ground, causing a thudding sound. Needless to say, this is one of the more graphic cartel videos, and certainly one of the most infamous. Though, the beheading of Felix is actually more brutal, despite his uncle being decapitated by the chainsaw. Number 2. Stabbing of a Russian Saboteur Without a doubt, the 21st century has witnessed a significant transformation in the way wars are documented and disseminated to the global audience. With the widespread availability of smartphones, social media platforms, and advanced digital communication technologies, conflicts are now often captured in real time and shared instantly on various online channels. With that being said, never have we been exposed to such depressing content, which is only a click away. In the last couple of years or so, it feels as if the world is becoming more divided, with conflicts breaking out all over the world, and with the proliferation of such content, the sense of impending doom is only exasperated further. Maybe the world has always been this unstable, but it's felt that the last few years have only gotten worse, and that potentially, we are on the brink of something even more serious. Ongoing conflicts in Sudan, Ukraine and Palestine have all produced incredibly sad, depressing, and quite frankly rage-inducing content. From the aftermaths of indiscriminate bombings, to the murder of surrendered prisoners of war. One clip in which I haven't covered on the channel, but honestly shook me to my core, is a video depicting the execution of a so-called Russian saboteur by a Ukrainian soldier. 
The war between Russia and Ukraine started in February of 2022, and the content in which it has produced has been nothing short of shocking. The clip in question came out in the early months of the war, and I never covered it at the time due to YouTube policies in relation to the war, though they seem to have relaxed them recently. The victim in said video allegedly was a Ukrainian man feeding information to Russian forces, though given the fog of war, I haven't seen any concrete proof of this. Allegedly, those who capture and killed him belonged to the Azov Battalion. The video was shot during the initial weeks of a Russian invasion and was said to be filmed in Maripol. I first watched the video when it made the rounds on Twitter, and although the video is extremely harrowing, one of the most disturbing takeaways from it was the comments. How easy the general population fall for dehumanisation tactics is actually extremely alarming. The video itself is short, at 1 minute and 5 seconds in length, and it appears to be recorded in an apartment block on a communal staircase. As you play the video, you see a soldier and his captive kneeling in front of one another, though the captive has a bag over his head. The soldier takes the bag off, and he then takes a knife that actually looks like a bayonet, and he pushes the victim's head back against a door, and then drives the blade into the victim's left eye socket. He pushes the blade as the victim grimaces in pain. He then pushes the victim to the ground so that he has better leverage. He then uses his palm to essentially hammer the blade deeper into the victim's eye socket. The victim is still alive, though somehow he is yet to make a sound. The killer then takes the handle of the blade and appears to shake it, or maybe even try to pull it out, and at this point, the victim lets out screams in which I cannot describe. He wails, and the sound echoes through the apartment block. I've rarely heard screams filled with so much terror. It's borderline traumatizing. The killer continues to jiggle the blade, and the screams turn more animalistic into growls almost. At this point, the killer resumes to using his palm to hammer the blade deeper into the victim's head. He hits the blade handle twice, each time maybe pushing the blade a centimetre deeper into the eye socket, and on the second palm strike, the victim stops making a noise, and it appears he goes limp. There was some confusion on whether the victim actually died, but seeing how deep the blade penetrated, I'd say he more than likely did. It seems that he drove the knife through the victim's eye and into his prefrontal cortex. The video is actually hard to find, and seems to have been scrubbed somewhat from mainstream platforms. Neither did mainstream news networks cover the killing, despite it being an obvious war crime. In creating this video, I was actually somewhat nervous to watch the clip again, and having done so, it's every bit as bad as I remember. Number 3. Kira Agua In 2019-2020, CJNG released a series of graphic videos, mainly stemming from the Mexican state of Michoacán, where CJNG were battling various rival cartels in an attempt to take over the state. Gangs such as Los Viagras, La Familia Michoacana, and Carteles Unidos to name a few were all in the crosshairs of CJNG. 2019-2020 in particular was especially brutal, with various notable cartel videos being released, including the infamous Ghost Rider video. For whatever reason, many people have an irrational fear of clowns, but the people of Michoacan had a good reason to. Fabian Urbino Morales, aka El Payaso, or in English, The Clown, terrorised the state of Michoacan for a number of years. El Payaso was an infamous Sicario who worked for CJNG and had a propensity for extreme violence and torture. His signature look on social media would go viral, flexing guns while wearing a clown mask with his fellow Sicarios. El Payaso was on the front line, leading his cell of Sicarios into battles with the likes of Los Viagras and La Familia Michoacana. Fortunately, El Payaso was arrested in 2020, and as of right now, he is still behind bars where he belongs. While feared by locals, 
Fabian Urbino Morales never garnered mainstream attention until early 2020 following the release of a shocking video which demonstrated his brutal handiwork. The video would be infamously dubbed Yo Quiero Agua, or in English, I Want Water, and the clip's content is utterly horrific. The video itself is actually quite short, at 25 seconds in length, and it details the pain and anguish experienced by one of El Payaso's captives after a long drawn out torture session. The victim in the video is described as a contra, which means opposition or a rival, and it's believed he belonged to La Familia Michoacana or Los Viagras. As you play the video, you are met with the horrific sights of the victim, who is being propped up by Sicarios so that he is looking at the camera. The man is a bloody mess. In fact, the skin on his face has been flayed off, leaving only his eyes which he cannot blink due to having no eyelids. His eyes protrude and stand out in the contrast to his flayed face, which is bright red, and the look on what used to be his face is haunting. The Sicarios mock the man and ask him, do you want water? The man replies, Quira Agua, which means I want water. The poor victim's voice is also extremely unsettling to listen to. It sounds gravelly and wheezy. It's hard to explain, but he barely sounds human anymore. He almost sounds like a villain out of a horror movie. The men keep teasing him with the promise of water. They say, Agua, Agua, and the man nods his head, though they refuse to give it to him. It also looks like some of the skin from the victim's chest has also been flayed, though it's hard to tell due to the quality of the footage and the fact that it has been recorded off another device. The video is shocking to say the least, and quite frankly, if I'd seen it with no context, I'd have assumed it was from a low-budget graphic horror movie. The sight of the victim still alive, with his face totally skinned, leaving only his eyes, is honestly hard to explain into words. It's certainly one of CJNG's most graphic videos, and one of the most unsettling cartel videos period. If you've watched the video, you would agree, the sound of the victim's voice and the noises he make certainly sticks with you. I also found some additional speculation that the victim may have been forced to drink gasoline prior to the recording, though whether true or not, I don't know. More than likely, the man was executed shortly after off camera. Number 4. Ukrainian Soldier Castration Once again, another video from the Russia-Ukraine war, this time depicting a Ukrainian soldier being butchered by Russian soldiers. On the 28th of July 2022, a video was posted on a Russian telegram page which showed a Russian soldier torturing and subsequently murdering a Ukrainian prisoner of war. There are actually two separate versions of a video, one detailing just the torture and the other showing both the torture and execution. The identity of the victim has been speculated ever since the video was released, but as of right now, it seems as if he is yet to be identified, which really highlights in such a situation the powers that be view us as a number and little more. Journalism group Bellingcat investigated the videos and reported that the gruesome act of torture and murder took place in Previlia, Luhansk Oblast, near a sanatorium. Bellingcat and the conflict intelligence team identified the soldiers involved, including the main perpetrator, Ochur Shug Mongoosh from Tuva, who wore a distinctive wide-brimmed black hat and was part of the Akmat unit, a Chechen Kadyrovite paramilitary formation fighting for the Russians in the war in Ukraine. The investigation also indicated that the video contained no evidence of tampering or editing. The perpetrator behind the video, despite pressure from the international community, has yet to see justice for the blatant war crime in which he was the main participant. He's no longer on the battlefield and is said to have moved to Moscow, though little else is known about his current situation. The version of the video that I have seen is 1 minute and 36 seconds in length. At the start of the video, you see the victim on the floor, and he has been beaten prior to recording, and his limbs have been bound. The victim is surrounded by multiple soldiers, but Ochur Shugmongoosh is the main perpetrator. 
The prisoner of war is beaten and mocked, before Oshur, wearing blue surgical gloves and wielding a box cutter knife, cuts through the victim's trousers, exposing his genitals. Oshur the savage then takes the box cutter and cuts under the victim's skin, and he pulls as he is cutting. You see the skin stretching as he pulls and cuts. It truly is a sickening sight. Eventually, Oshur castrates the victim and holds the severed testicles up to the camera, before then throwing them next to the victim's face as he lays on the ground, writhing in pain. There is an extended version of the video that shows the captive being executed via a gunshot to the head, and I also believe it shows his body being thrown into a ditch. It's truly one of the worst war crimes that I've seen since doing this channel, and I'd implore you not to look at it. Number 5. Rainforest Machete Massacre Brazil, much like Mexico, is a country that is gripped with the problem of organised crime and the violence that comes with it. Various gangs in recent years have been terrorising the general population, such as Commando Vermelho and Primeiro Commando de Capital. Brazilian drug gangs have been responsible for a ton of gruesome online content, depicting all kinds of savagery, from dismemberments to organ removal. Though, despite the brutality of these videos, and Brazilian drug gangs in general, they do not attract the same amount of media coverage as Mexican drug cartels. The only video from Brazil that garnered online traction would be the murders of Nara Aline Mota de Lima, who was 23 years old, Darciel Anselmo de Alençar, who was 31, and Ingrid Teixeira Ferreira, who was 22 years old. The murders were gang-related, and at least one of the women were said to be linked with Commando Vermelho, one of the biggest and most brutal gangs in Brazil, and those responsible for the murder of the young women were allegedly linked with Guardios do Estado, also known as GDE. The shocking crime took place in Fortaleza in the Ceara region. Ingrid Teixeira Ferreira was not murdered on video, though she was beheaded. The video itself is just under 6 minutes in length, and it opens showing a woman, Darciel, being interrogated. The setting is that of a muddy jungle, and the video is shot during the day. Darciel, according to some sources, was in a relationship with Nara Elena Mota de Lima. It's also speculated that Nara was the only one of the group involved in organised crime, and the other two victims, more than likely, were in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's hard to tell exactly how many perpetrators there are, but they laugh and mock her as they interrogate. They also make her pledge allegiance to GDE. The video then jump cuts, this time showing the same woman begging and pleading for her life while being covered in blood. She's taken a severe beating, and she gets on her knees begging for mercy. The men mock her before one shoots her in the head point blank, while another lets out a sick sadistic laugh. One of the hitmen then takes a machete and starts hacking away at her throat in an attempt to behead her. The video jump cuts once again, this time showing the interrogation of Nara Aline Mota de Lima. Due to Nara being directly tied to Commando Vermelho, she is made to suffer an even worse fate than her partner Darciel. She is interrogated for a short while as she confesses her criminal allegiances. The video then jump cuts, and it now shows a scene where Nara is resting her hand on a log as instructed to by her captors. She talks to her eventual killers calmly as she waits for the hitman to strike her hand with the machete. The deranged killer then smashes the blade against her hand. She grimaces, but doesn't scream. She pulls her hand away, but is instructed to place it back on the log. Once again, the killer strikes her hand with the machete, this time causing much more damage and coating the log in blood. Nara begins to try to hold back the tears, and her hand is already mangled. She holds it up to the camera, and you see deep lacerations and fingers hanging on strands of flesh. She is then told to move away from the log, and then the video jump cuts. The video then shows Nara sitting in a hole, which looks to be a crudely dug shallow grave. A man is kneeling above the grave, and is pulling her arm so that it is outstretched. 
He then begins to butcher her, hacking away between the bicep and forearm. She lets out groans but doesn't scream. The machete is somewhat blunt, so it takes several strikes. At one point, she pulls away her arm, but the killer begins to strike her on the back with the machete, and eventually, he once again grabs the arm. He then resumes to hacking away, before severing her right arm. She is then observed by the cameraman for a few moments, as she sits in the muddy hole, bleeding profusely. She still pleads for her life, and seeing her try to move, and maybe try to get out of a hole, is a horrible sight. The killer, who is wearing a blue shirt and shorts, then re-enters the scene and begins hacking at her knees with a machete. Despite her horrific ordeal, Nara has actually remained calm, but at this point, she begins to panic, cry and plead even more. As the man strikes her, she tries to ball up to protect herself, though this doesn't deter the killer and he begins to hack away all over her body. She's covered in blood and mud, how she hasn't passed out at this point is insane. The video then jump cuts, and it shows a different scene. Somehow, the victim is still alive, and she is now laying on her stomach, but the killer is pulling her by the hair, lifting her head up and exposing her throat. One of the men can be heard laughing as the killer takes the blade and slices across the victim's throat. She's still alive, and still continues to try to protect herself, she raises her arms, even the one that is severed at the forearm, and tries to protect her throat. She uses her left hand to cover her throat, but the killer just hacks away. Eventually, she resists. He begins beheading her, striking her at the front of her throat with a blade. She makes horrible wheezing sounds, as the men laugh. The beheading takes a while, due to the blade being blunt, but eventually, the killer does the job. At the end of the video, a new scene is shown, as one of the men picks up all three heads by the hair. As mentioned, Ingrid Teixeira Ferreira was murdered off-camera. Thankfully, it seems that most of the men behind the murder have been caught by the authorities, including Jonathan Lopez Duarte, who was sentenced to 83 years in prison. Diego Alvarez Fernandez, Luis Alves, and Honorato Santos were also captured and sentenced to long prison sentences. A 17-year-old was also arrested in connection with the murders, though given his age, it's unclear what his punishment was. Unfortunately, one man it seems is still free and on the run, him being Alison de Oliveira Borges. One can only hope that one day, he faces justice. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. Again, people always ask me, the, one, the number one question I get asked is what are the worst gore videos that you've seen? And these are another five that uh, really got to me for different reasons, but every single video on this list is utterly horrific, much like the previous video we made on this topic. Um, but yeah, don't search out for any of these videos, they are as bad as I say they are. They are not worth watching. As always, thank you guys for the support, it's much appreciated. If you could, smash the like, hit subscribe would be great. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, the link, to the, the link to my Twitter will be in the pinned comment. You can drop me a DM if you have any case recommendations. Also, if you could follow me on Twitch, that would be much appreciated. Once again, the link is in the pinned comment. But anyway, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.